So let's look at how companies are funding themselves. So about half of the financing requirements of clean tech developers currently are funded uh, by existing clean tech operating cash flow, uh, other operating cash flow for clean tech developers that are operating within a larger entity, uh, and uh, founder equity. <clears throat> the other half of capital requirements are spread among various sources, uh, of which the most prominent ones are private equity and government grants. Uh, government grants uh, uh, should not be underestimated that they, as you see uh, there on the graph, they represent a, a fairly large piece of that pie as well. Uh, equity finance from friends, family, and angel vessels, investors, as was uh, mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's important uh, and it does comprise about 7% of last year's funding uh, requirements. And uh, given how early a lot of these companies are, it's not surprising that uh, your typical term debt uh, lender is not going to be very willing to put money into this. So as you see, it's a, it's a fairly small piece of the pie for those types of funding sources. So we were talking about deal sizes and rounds and how much companies are generally asking for when they go to the table. And uh, interestingly, but I don't think it's inconsistent with what we've heard, you know, deal sizes, $12 million to $15 million or somewhere in that range. In Canada, in Western Canada, we are seeing, uh, at least in the next couple of years, much uh, more modest financing requirements. Uh, about half of uh, respondents believe they, they'll need uh, less than $3 million in the next two years of external financing. This is over and above any financing they'd be generating internally. And about the other half believe they need uh, more over three million. Uh, so we'll uh, let's just press on here. So uh, this one is uh, uh, I don't want to make enemies here, but I mean the important word here is that it's perceived, right? There's. Uh, I, Dave, Dave uh, Sparrow in the back coached me this morning. He said, remember, there's two sides to every story. <laughs> so, um, so it's important, important to make that point. Clean tech developers feel that the biggest barriers to receiving private equity financing include private equity focusing on later stage deals. Mike, you admit that freely. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's, so that's just fine. Uh, looking for a quicker exit strategy, and Sean uh, touched on that, looking for something that's efficient and quick, uh, and uh, the inability to agree upon the valuation of the company, which is uh, an ongoing problem regardless of the technology. Uh, clean tech developers in Western Canada feel that the biggest barriers to receiving government funding, and you don't see it on this slide, but, um, uh, but I'm going to speak to it briefly here, uh, include insufficient support for the commercialization stage, a lack of high capex project financing, and insufficient support related to their particular clean tech subsector. So, uh, you know, notwithstanding the noble efforts of, of AVAC or STTC, which are very significant players and very active players in the clean tech space, the demand for government financing rem remains very, very strong. Uh, so, uh, I think that's, uh, that's very, very positive. And this is the uh, last uh, finding that we're going to be uh, talking about in this, in this presentation. This is a list of uh, challenges to clean tech developers and as you see it down at the bottom, they're ranked as either a key challenge, a moderate challenge, no challenge or unknown. Raising new growth capital was indicated as the number one key challenge facing approximately 57% of respondents. And uh, this is consistent uh, with the view that current economic conditions have, have compounded the problem of uh, raising capital for technology companies. Another key challenge uh, was the ability to attract grants and funding to support R&D commercialization, which was selected by about half of the respondents. And a key challenge also, which is never a good mix with I need money, is attracting new customers, and, and att particularly attracting new customers in Canada. Um, so uh, the issue uh, for Western Canada clean tech developers, uh, more than generating a market outside of our country, 
uh, most of them, more of them believe that the real issue is trying to generate customers here in the country. And when you put that together with where the industry, uh, where the customer focus is on the EMP, oil sands, conventional mining, um, there's opportunity there that is being sought. And uh, to many of these developers, it is felt that, that that is the most logical market to pursue. So, overview. And I'll just go through those quickly. Most companies surveyed are beyond the research stage. 78% of respondents generate less than 2 million in sales, and of those, many are generating less than 100,000 uh, per annum. Uh, developments focused on energy generation, efficiency, and air quality. Primary customers are energy EMP companies and utilities. Financing is split evenly between internal and external sources. About half of respondents need less than three million of external financing, while the other half need greater than three million. Uh, top perceived barriers to VC and private equity, uh, too focused on later stage deals, inability to agree upon the valuation. And raising new growth capital and attracting new customers, the top challenge is facing the clean tech industry in Western Canada. And uh, uh, I think that's, uh, that's an appropriate uh, segue into how do we fit into all of this? Uh, we, uh, we help companies uh, deal with some of these issues. Um, we provide a full range of uh, corporate finance valuation and due diligence support. So it's very typical for a Deloitte guy to come in uh, when a company is looking at doing some sort of a significant transaction related to their technology, their IP, or their company. I need a valuation because I'm getting a grant from STTC or AVAC, they need to know the value of my company. We would come in as the valuators and assist with that process. We would also assist in the due diligence uh, piece uh, when a uh, sophisticated uh, lender or another uh, company would be looking to do a transaction. We would be there to assist in that regard as well. And then, of course, uh, uh, tax-related uh, considerations, which often get overlooked. We are, uh, we are the guys that uh, read into the detail uh, that uh, can lead to a more efficient structure and a better, uh, better transaction overall. And then, of course, our audit and assurance practices is also a very important part of what we do. That's it. Well, and I, I guess I, I should mention if uh, the report is not uh, out uh, yet, it's being launched next month. Uh, but if you'd like uh, to get on the distribution list, uh, you can leave either Dave or I your business card, and we could add you to the list and, and get you a copy of the report. Thank you.